Okay. Um, welcome everyone to this another exciting episode of IMSF webinar. Um, today being uh, the twenty eighth day of August two thousand and three. Uh, um, we will be dealing with another exciting topic today. Um, we try to look at the burning issues most of the time. What is actually confronting us in the mining sector? Um, today we'll be looking at state indigenous people's rights and interferences in mining activities. So um, I'm also trying to ensure that uh, our presenter and some of our discussants have actually joined us. Um, Taya, are you here? Okay, Taya is here already. Taya has actually joined. So um, we today will be a more of interactive section because this actually. Uh, most of us have experienced uh, have experienced these issues in different communities or the other and where we are actually coming from. So I think it's something that I've also tried to see if there are some lawyers that have actually um, uh, experienced some issues or in, um, uh, encountered some issues while dealing with community consent in different communities. So I would want, want to give some privileges to some people to just talk about it two minutes, a minute to share with what they've actually um, passed through um, in this, uh, in some of these processes that actually involve in mining regulations. So um, um, before that, the, the process is, as usual, um, we introduce who, who we are um, as IMSF. IMSF um, is, is, is uh, a non-governmental organization that are actually into, um, into activity that are related to mining. We are more of advocacy um, um, organization. We try to bring awareness that actually required in, in, in this industry. Um, this organization is mainly of, uh, of people that are actually into mining, um, professionals that are actually focused, um, dedicated to you know, bring awareness and knowledge of, about Nigerian geology and uh, mineral resources. And also, we um, want to bring this awareness to students, to some educators, to investors, to entrepreneurs, and uh, to general public in um, practical terms. Our slogans are usually uh, mining matters. And um, one of our vision is to ensure professionalism through fostering awareness of Nigerian geology and mineral resources at different levels. And to this extent, we want to also bring bridge the existing gaps among relevant stakeholders while upholding global best practices. You see, um, including our mission is also to take initiative in involving the youth to explore the earth science, mining, and mineral exploration um, industries through and organize our learning activities. We also tend to provide hands-on mineral resources program opportunities, mentorship, innovative education and some practical training opportunities in extractive industry in Nigeria. So this is who we are. And uh, today we'll be dealing with another topic. Um, before we go on, as usual, um, Dr. Mrs. Salau, if you are here, I uh, would just uh, want uh, you to give an opening remark about 30 seconds or a minute because I have a lot of things to actually run through today. If you're not here, um, Dr. Fadele can actually do that on our behalf. Then we, we will now um, bring on board our presenter and our discussant. And after that, our discusser, um, the presenter will give you about 30, 40 minutes to talk through this. And having known this, we know that, um, that recently, that not quite long, after the swearing in of the new governors that are, uh, you know, uh, the mining industry just started witnessing an avalanche of executive orders banning um, mining activities in some states like uh, Ebony Oshun, um, some Taraba, um, which has been one of, uh, you know, the major issues that actually um, uh, we have right now. And also some bodies like uh, Miners Association of Nigeria um, under the auspices of, uh, I think, yeah, that is uh, MA, Mining Association of Nigeria has actually come out to, to say that the ban on mining activity by some state government um, is illegal. And 
according to them, um, you know, um, they also expressed displeasure over the alleged inversion and the jailing of the registered mining company staff by the Taraba State Government and Tax Force. Um, so these have been issues that are actually um, we also want to look at and what are the interferences and encroachment of all these as regards to the um, to the local communities. You know, also the presence of intense conflicts over land belonging to indigenous communities is also a pressing issue in Nigeria. And along this, we also want to, you know, um, some of these indigenous rights that encompass the land uh, ownership, cultural preservation, and self determination. You know, there are so many things we need to look at in this uh, this context. So I think a lot has to be done by the state and the federal government in order to bring about the harmony that is actually required in this industry. If not, um, this will actually um, um, hamper a lot of things and investors and investment that are actually supposed to come into the country will not actually work out. So um, to this end, I will briefly want to bring in Dr. Mrs. Salau to give a, an opening remark before we proceed. Dr. Mrs. Salau, over to you. Dr. Fadele, are you there? Yes. Please. Yes, I'm with you. Okay, please go on. She's, I don't think she's there. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Andy Nagidia, for, for driving the process so far. And um, I want to welcome us again to today's um, episode of, uh, of our programs and core value as IMSF, which is part of our own you know, our own way of reaching out to uh, professionals in the industry. And um, we believe that every segment and every topic of discussion uh, could be impactful and um, also improve the way we, you know, we drive our businesses in the industry, just like um, our core values and vision. Uh, which is to ensure professionalism through you know, fostering proper management and governance of Nigerian geology and mineral resources, and also looking at safer and productive mining practices across the Nigerian mining sector. I believe day-to-day -day, um, programs like this or a monthly uh, episode we look at is fostering towards or channel towards our vision and core values. Uh, I would want to welcome us again and uh, welcome the resource persons that are going to handle the subject uh, matter for today. Uh, I would wish each and every one of us a fruitful deliberation even as we go through uh, the subject matter today. Thank you so much, Engineer uh, Gideon. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Fadeli, for that uh, brief uh, opening remark. And I will also want to Okay, at this juncture, I would just want to we have um we have um our presenter here already waiting. I'm uh, Kintaya David Ajani. Um, I think this is the second time he's actually coming here on this platform to speak to us. Um, he's a versatile miner. Uh, he's someone who is actually um who is actually experienced over thirty years of experience. Uh, he studied from University of Ibado. He has some uh. Postgraduate diploma in Benue State University. Uh, David Ajani also um, uh, also is um, um, acquired an MSc in uh, Environmental and Resource Management from Benue State University, and currently working on uh, on some research, PhD research in uh, artisanal small scale uh, mining and development of uh, sustainable communities. So you can see. Um, is someone who is actually well experienced in this. Uh, he has dealt with a lot of communities, issues, and he has also been involved in uh, in, part, um, uh, in several EIAs and RIP projects uh, as a team member, as a consultant. Also in different projects like the CEO and TOG uh, Brothers Limited Directors, several activities in this. So I think um, um, David um, Ajani is one of the um, Next person that could actually talk on this, and is also a member of some of the known uh, notable uh, professional bodies, like a uh, member 
the Nigerian Environmental Society. He's a member of Nigerian Institute of Management and uh, also um, member association of uh, Nigerian geographers. Um, at this end, I want to us to just um, before we um, start interactive uh, our discussion section uh, for him to just uh, run through um, this presentation uh, before we go forward. I will want to bring uh, uh, our presenter to the platform. So Tayo, you're welcome. We can hear you. Okay. Check if you are muted. Okay. I, I, uh, okay now. Yeah, we can hear you okay. now. Yeah, so good, good afternoon, men and uh, women, ladies and gentlemen. I, I want to welcome us to this platform again. Sorry. Let me let me take off my my phone so that I can use my laptop. And I'm getting feedback that is not proper. Uh, you so can lower, go. if not, you can lower the volume of your phone. You can yeah. also work that okay. very, very lower. It's, it's fine, yes. Yeah, so so it's, it's okay now. So as I was saying, we will just run through it. And um, my approach today will be a bit different. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be citing a lot of instances, just like my friend Gideon said. We've had a little experience here and there. And we've had a lot of communal issues that I think is very appropriate. So basically, we're talking today about uh, state indigenous people's rights and interferences in mining activities. And um, I don't know, but by irony of nature, God has so much done it that most of the mineral deposits don't find them inside towns. Most of them are in rural areas, in terms of most areas, areas where you have indigenous people that are mining. And it's not only in Nigeria. I've been privileged to be in a few places too. I've seen a little mining in the US. I've seen a little bit here and there. And almost all deposits are almost in rural areas. So it is pertinent. This topic is very pertinent today. So um, also the issue of persistence, intense conflicts over land that belongs to indigenous people. It's a recurrent issue. So it's an issue that has to be dealt with. And uh, such rights of the indigenous people are being infringed on, include the rights to land ownership, to cultural preservation, to self-determination, and like. And um, many activities take place in lands that are traditionally occupied by indigenous communities. So this ultimately leads to conflicts over land use, displacement, cultural disruption, all of that. I remember way back in the 90s when we were in Chalaba State, Karim, let, let me do precisely, we at that time, we, we didn't have this kind of uh, flan issue. We always had issue with farmers and herdsmen where mining parents and led them in uh, one small community called Didango. Sometimes we just see one man will come and say, we are stopping mining today. And then not to a vision of the staple. We'll come to that later so that we don't waste that time. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. So state governments, I at advantage position to help navigate this labyrinth, these complexities, uh, so that they can serve as a go between an habitat between the rights of indigenous people and also the mining uh, enterprise too. And then there's a need to also integrate the the, the indigenous people too to the mining rules and regulations. For example, we'll come to that later. In Canada. The crown, that's the queen, owns all land. But there's a caveat in their constitution. It says, subject to the indigenous rights. So we'll come to that later. No wonder mining works better in those climes. They don't overlook the rights of the indigenous. Very important. So to address these issues, states can implement measures to protect indigenous people's rights by developing frameworks for meaningful consultations. There's a proverb in Africa. You don't, you don't shape somebody's head behind him. So it's it's only in Nigeria and some other West Africa, some other African countries that you see instances like that. I mean, indigenous people should come in right from the formation of the policies. Like presently now, I'm I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard about the case brought by one family in Osho State uh, against the uh, Segilola mines, these gold people and government. I mean, government has a flat rate for compensation. As people said, you can't pay us one two million when you are making billions. I mean, I mean, which is right. So. They, they just won last Saturday, last Friday in the court. So the court asked compel government and Seglola to pay them 250 million naira. I'm sure Seglola will, will appeal, but eventually, I mean, as it will always happen, the right of indigenous will not be valued. So that is very key. Like I told us, I'll be sharing with us from my repository of my mining 
uh, voyage in into ma in many climbs and areas. And it's, I mean, this is more than so we'll not do too much of theory. We'll bring an example so that we can relate to it. All of us at one point or the other have been through all these issues too. So that's what that. So we the, the things like obtaining free prior informed consent before approving projects and then providing avenue for digital representation in decision making processes. So now let's talk about the human rights impacts of mining activities. What are the impacts? What are human rights things that are impacted upon? Now, mining has greatly affected indigenous people's ter uh, territories as these areas contain significant deposits of sodium minerals. We've talked about that before. And uh, focus should be on consultation and free from informed consent. I said it and repeat again. You don't shape somebody's head behind them. It's not fair. It's not fair. I mean, you can't just muzzle them and say this what you must take. It must be a judge or and uh, I, I will say this time of one of us. Yeah, it, it was, I think it was one of the people that presented last last time, Patrick. I learned a lot of from him. We were together. We also have mining sites in Guma. You see, that area was known for very hostile community, but Patrick has been having his way. And I learned one thing from him. He has carried people along. It's very key. And you will understand later. We also talk about the issue of social license. You understand later that it's not enough. The people you and I hold is not enough. The community consent is key. You understand that later. So we 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 need to build consensus around these key principles so that human rights of just people can be protected in the event of mining industries, such lives as the right to life, to forced displacement. I mean, we talk about RAP, resettlement action program. There was one we, we, we prepared for um um polygon some 15, 18 years back in Benin State. We had a lot of consultation at every stage of the RAP program. We always consulting. We had town hall meetings so that we had input from the community because we had to ship them. And then before you can ship them, we had the uh, ancestral lands, we had groves, we had places that unfortunately the mineral products entered them. So we had to talk to them. And uh, Patrick is a, a journey today. So that's the thing. So consultation and participation decision making, very key. Rights to land and resources and the right to property, very important. And also the rights to clean environment because these people bear the brunt. I mean, the pollution. The, the contamination, the the land, um, uh, uh, the land, um, uh, the land use tampering with all of those things, they bear the brunt. Unfortunately, they don't get commensurable returns for those sacrifices. So that's very important. And then um, the the next slide, we need to look from uh, the international to the local. There are rights internationally that have been provided for by the UN, such as the UN declarations on the rights of indigenous people. That's uh, in 2007. That clearly provides for the interest of indigenous people. They cannot be marginalized. We, we, we also we have the ILO Convention 169 on indigenous and tribal people. I mean, this factor in the indigenous people, the things that must be done so that we can have a smooth, a smooth and uh, a, a rank of free direction. What are the causes of conflicts? You may ask me. We all know that. I mean, but let me just refresh our mind. There's always the standard issue of dispute over land use and ownership. Who owns the land? Very, very important. Then there's the displacement of indigenous communities because most times we almost always have to displace some other people, either the farm, sometimes the settlement, like the issue of uh, polygon. I mean, settlement will, be, will, be, will, will, will have to be, I mean, displaced. But I mean, we had adequate provision made for their resettlement. And then there's cultural disruption and losses. Sometimes there are sacred sacred communal community lands that have to be disrupted. So you can't just say by fiat. You want to just seize their land. So it has to be with that. And what I find out, and, and I'm very sincere, I've mined everywhere in Nigeria, apart from Baru State. Let me repeat that. I've mined everywhere in Nigeria, over 30 years, apart from Baru State. There is no tribe that if you know how to play your card, that you, you won't have your way. But you must not come trying to impress, trying to say I'm from the ministry. No. No, no. Yes, there's a legal part, but when you bring come to their level, you 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 you, you take them in, then things will always work out. And then there's the issue of combative host communities in remote many areas. And I would want to change this a little. They are combative because you don't have their key. I've seen one, two, three projects that have had to work because we took uh we took contents of them. That's a there's 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 an issue I just started today at the ministry. My 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 uncle applied for a, a SSML in Kogi State. And uh, let me shock you. One man, I mean, I, I would say, boss, so that we, we don't get personal. A retired director of the ministry came, talked to one chief out of seven chiefs, 
got a community out of seven community consent and covered about 300 plus use without the, the agreement of all of them. And then they were trying to muzzle their way. The, the community said, if they see them, they will finish them. So we had to come in, there are a lot of things, but summarily now, the, 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 the ministry are now to bow. It was this morning I was talking to my friend Abuja. They now to bow, they said there's no need for a meeting. It's very clear. The committee have written them that these are the people they know. They want to be known, they should come down to their level. Somebody can't just stay up there and then muzzle it. So the issue of I mean, dialogue and, and getting consent is very important. And it's not far-fetched. It's not any big deal. So that because of conflict. Now, we want to look at the state's role as an arbiter. Unfortunately, and I repeat, unfortunately, our mining laws and the 1999 constitution that we follow does not give the state too much authority, which is an, is, is, is an anomaly. Uh, so almost like something years ago, I was I was I was much younger. I was prepared to be traveling the countryside in the US, actually in Oklahoma State. And one thing I noticed, I was telling my uncle then, even oil drilling is the county. You see all at the back of your house, you mine, you drill, you do the processing, you the, the county directly that is closest to you. That, that's the equivalent of the government. They are the one that, that manages it. Then a particular part, something is paid to the state and then to the federal. So the federal is so far, far away. And I found out that it works better. But unfortunately, our rules, our laws does not factor this in, which is an anomaly. And then uh, it's, it's part of the, the advocacy on this platform. We need to have a, a an all-inclusive min, mineral policies that will be bottom up not top bottom. If it's bottom up with a lot of input from the bottom, it will work better. So state government basically now they are more of uh, monitoring and supervisory authorities. Uh, but state government can ensure indigenous rights in mining regulations and policies. And also it is very important for state government to act and as a as a go between between the host communities and the and the and the, the companies before the licenses are granted. I just started the issue of something that happened in Ogi State recently. The community thing is very, very important. And then the, the, the Mineral Act provided for the mining, it provided for the mining, uh, the Mining Mineral Resources and Environmental Committee, Miremco, which is more for each state, which is more of an advisory body, but that is the part the state government can come in. But like, like I told us, the federal control the natural resources, which which I think personally, in my opinion, I think it's an anomaly. It is an anomaly. And then the role of the state government basically is advisory. And then there's the Miremco, the Mineral Resources and Environment Committee, which is supposed to ensure that those things that are written in the EIA and the RAP reports are not just theory, which is the in fact, these are the things. Most of our EIAs, there is no enforcement, there's no monitoring evaluation committee, there's no uh, um, um, uh, there are no systems in place to ensure that beyond the Ministry of Abuja, when you come to the to the local committee level, those things are being translated to reality. And then the state also serve as uh, staff, they, they play advisory role in supervising in the supervising mineral activities. So the next slide. So the the, the states can can play more part by establishing the state solid mineral solution management system. All of us know what management systems are. But management systems simply have it's like a repertoire of who are the licensed owners, what do they do, what are their the community development agreements, how much have they enforced it. I mean, there are checklists that can be ticked against what things have been done. I mean, this makes it to be a flawless, seamless thing. And then also the state must not make the mistake of throwing, and that's why we've been asking for a review of the Mineral Mining Act, just as it's done in the in the oil and gas sector, there, there, there must be a particular part that is coming back to the source region and from which the state should endeavor. The state should not throw the issue of infrastructure de 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 development basically on the mining company. No, the state should, when they provide the infrastructure, they even have a better say. Then they have they have they have made, made it easier for the mining companies to come in, just like part like Gideon said. I mean, if we want to uh, attract foreign direct investment, we need to, there are some basic things, things like road, like light, those are basic things that we don't necessarily need. If, if we are looking at attracting the the, the, the boys, the Ashanti gold types of people, we, we cannot afford not to provide those things. And then the state too can serve as um, as an as a go-between in the issue of negotiating CDAs, community development agreement, because most of our communities are not too lettered. The ones that are let out, they don't stay there. So most times we cheat them. Let's let's be honest. We entered from community development agreement with one or two people that are greedy. 
They are doing it after the community we give them some money and then they put pen to paper for something and it's just not fair. But if you play it well, it's a win-win for everybody, just like we'll see later. Yes, the next slide. So um the, the next slide we'll be talking about the community sensation and involvement. Now, there's a need to educate those communities about their rights. Now, what you don't know, it is over and above you. That's the saying of my pastor. So what you don't know, I mean, they need to know what are their rights. And th that is even before they start to negotiate with the mining communities. It's very important because they, they need to know their rights. They need to approach the negotiation table from the point of proper enlightenment. What are their rights? What are their roles? You understand? And then infrastructure development for enabling environment. We need to see this. And then there's the active role of local government. The local government is actually the closest to the to the mine activities. Like in Ghana, in Ghana, you'd be shocked. I was uh, it's, it's part of my PhD research work. I did a, a little study and I found out that the system in Ghana played a lot of emphasis. And that's why Ghana's contribution of mining to the GDP is in, is, is in double digits. I mean, look at the system where now they have there's a there's a provincial army council. There's a there's a local government council. There's a traditional council, the community. So there are councils that are seats on mining activities. Before it comes to that, the the the, the federal is just more like like a supervisory thing. You understand? So no one of the others. Look at Ethiopia. It is Ethiopia has devolved the the function to the local government because the local government is very close to the local to the local. They are the closest government to the, the community. Like I told you, my experience in US, then I was a, a lot younger. You understand? I even oil. I mean, you see, you get your mining list, you mine, you even, you even, you even um, refine at the back of your house. You pay to the county, the county has something they give to the state, and then the state, very small thing. And that's how you can see California state. I mean, they 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 they, they compete with federal in terms of resources. Those are the possibilities. So that's, that, and that's why I think we should we should, we should be pressing for a, a review of our mining rights. So look at Ethiopia. Ethiopia has a better, I mean, devolved system. And they, they contribute up to 10 percent of the GDP. Our with all of our noise since 1990, 2007 in our mining act, the best we've done is 0.3 of the GDP. So that will tell you that there's a nexus. Who comes that there seems to be a nexus to my research. Show. There seems to be a nexus between developed mining environment and um, um properly devolved system that takes cognizance of the smaller government, the local state, and all of that. So um, like I told us. There's a there's a need for change in our constitution, mineral mining our constitution, so that there, there's too much concentration at the center. Abuja is too far from my village. Abuja is too far from Gideon's village. Abuja is too far from where this deposits are. So why don't you allow the owner of the earth and uh, shape his head to be there? So that's for that. And um we need to go to the next one now. We're talking about sustainable mining and those communities now. Sustainability is sorry, okay. So like, like we're talking about international, okay. Sorry, now sustainable mining and host community. Now, before we talk about sustainability, so sustainability, if strictly looking at, looks like an aberration anomaly in terms of mining because mining is a finite product, but there's, there's a sustainability concept in mining. Sustainability in mining goes beyond just sustainable environment. No. Sustainability in mining talks about sustainable community. What do we mean? What we're talking about simply is a community where we recognize that these deposits will not last forever. So as we are mining them, we are setting up systems. We are training people so that when the mineral get, gets exhausted or there's a bust, we come to that later, and there's a law, they can, when it can translate to other things like agriculture, like other things that will still make the community to be buoyant. So the, the 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 normal thing that happens in community, once there's a decline in mineral activity, the community seems to suffer uh, 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 losses, should not come there again. So the issue of sustainable mining uh, uh, community comes to play. A mining community is one that takes care of today and make sure that even when the, the, the mineral product in question gets exhausted, the community is still, the community has been able to translate that that wealth to other things that can be enduring, like agriculture and other things. So, and um, and then the issue of the boom and bust. Those, those of us that have been that, that, that spent a few years in mining, every every it's, it's like a cycle. There's a boom, like metals, it goes up, it comes and goes up. So these cycles are not good for sustainability. But when you put the proper things in place, then the systems will be able to absorb. I thought, the, thought we have a uh, what well, I thought we have uh, what is it called. Working talking. Yeah. I thought it goes around for everybody. Yes. So I I have it now. 
They can call the so we, we didn't yes. So uh, can we go? I just want us to be playing with these guys. You know, community people. Yeah. They are very kind of uh, very streaky people. So I don't want something that to move to her Oh yeah, you have to stop work. And then management will not understand. They will just say, why didn't you factor all this one? Why are you delaying my project? So I just want to be clear and clear. Okay, Taya, you can unmute yourself. I think um there was interruption from uh, the background. Go on. Taya, you can go on now. Yeah, Taya, are you there? You can go on. Hello? Taya, can you hear me? Yeah, tell you, unmute yourself and continue. Yeah, unmute yourself and continue. Okay, okay, we are back. We are back. Hello. Yes. Go oh, on. Fine. So, so, so don't, don't worry. When we come to the to the interact session, we we handle that. I know. No, go on. I think that. In, yeah, go on. Go on. You just we, have we, about we, two we, minutes. We handle that, that issue that you raised. We handle. They are tricky, but no problem. We come to that. So that so so there's a need for uh, uh so so the, the next slide is equitable benefit and skill development. So there's uh there's this anomaly. Most of the 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 benefits of mining. Does not end up with the local income. Even in 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 Peru, we find out that the the towns and cities and um, um, bigger settlements around the main locations are the ones that gets more of the benefits. The places that the things come from, they don't get it. I don't know, but whether by design or by accident, I don't know that. So as we're trying, so there's an inequitable sort of mining benefit, so that it can go across board from the community. Then there's also the need to train the workforce, so that eventually. Don't forget, we're talking about finite products. Eventually, the mineral product will finish. So when it finishes, then they can transfer their skills. Then the issue of the Dutch disease will not come in again. Dutch disease is a concept that talks about, you know, people, other sectors dying because of one sector that is prominent. That will not need to be again. And then there's need for advocacy for those communities during negotiation. So that's that. And then we'll go to the very, very important issue of social license. Like, 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 like I told us, Licensing, there are two aspects to licensing. There are the SSMLs, the MLs that we get from the ministry, fantastic. But the issue of community, and that is even the issue that was raised now by the that interjection we had. He's talking about being, 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 them being, being crafty. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's a natural thing. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that later. Most people that own these minerals, they have unrealistic expectations. And because of our de desperation, those of us that, that are investors in mining, we don't allow them to understand the intricacies, the dangers, the potentials, and the risk. So we only show them one aspect, and that's the problem. And then in every community, you always have people that are trying to be smart. And most of us don't go to the right people. We'll, we'll come to that later from my experience. I'm sure Gideon will be will, 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 will come in, will come in for in this area. When you see the landowner, then you see the, the rightful chiefs that have claims over the place, and then you now go from there. So if you don't take those sequences, if you just take one thing, and then you don't think because you have seen the landowner, you would see the community, or you see the community, you see the landowner. There are sequences which we will talk when we come to the open house, which I'm sure we'll get to later. So there's a need for advocacy for host communities. And then the social license. Sorry, get on the, the, the next slide, please. The next slide on social license. Yes. So the, the, the social license is evolving. Social license simply means the consent of the community, it is not written, it's not a document, but without it, I can tell you of several experiences. I, I just told you, there's a big Chinese company that wants to muzzle us in Kogi State. The community said they don't want them. So you understand? So the social license, no matter the license you get, it is the community first before you go to the to, to the federal. So that's very important. And so, so, so social license is simply talking about you having the consent. It is not written. It is being as acceptable and it's not a permanent thing. 
it can it can lose your social license if the, the, the community feel that they're not benefiting, they're not living up to your expectation, and, and that is key when you are negotiating. Don't claim to do what you cannot do. Always carry them along and be open. Very very important. Those are the things that will make you to get social license and to keep it. Now what you cannot do when you've not done the proper deals. You don't know your deposit. You don't know the quantity. You promise heaven and earth, and then maybe it's one of these one of these trace deposits, and then you have issues. Those are the problems we have. That puts us in problem. You raise hopes. You promise heaven and earth. You can't make it. Those are the things. Then there's very very pronounced to have first relationship. There are three parties. It's a tripartite thing. It's a trilateral thing actually. There's the there's the community. There's a state that should serve as a habitat, and there's the mining trust the entrepreneur. So those three people should start dialoguing from the onset. It's very important. Very, very important. So that's for that issue of the social licenses. And um, when we get the social license work, working, it works. Like I told us, it's a tri trilateral negotiations between the government, the state, between the state and local government, the company and the community. Neither of those three must be absent. It's very important. And then there must be trust. That the issue of trust is important. Listen, the locals are afraid. They, they, they almost all of them the same way you are afraid. But that, that, that I tell you my experiences, there was time we're mining in Ibi in Taraba. We had issues. They would just make up one day they are stopping mining. But I, I would repeat easy, the issue of fully uh, guard investment again, Patrick. I mean, we need to when we see people are getting it right. Look at what, what Patrick is doing. Now. It's an agrarian society. As they are mining now, they are taking cognizance of their farming. So he's doing them, their main product is very sick. They also have a problem with security. He's bringing a lot of security people there. So the people are coming back. Now he's carrying them along. They are long. Initially, I was having my fears with him, but now I see that yeah, yeah, even though I might have more experience with, with, with than him, but in this wise, I learned a lot from him. I mean, I, I'm not too proud to, to tell somebody when I learned something better, there's a way you bring them in. And then, of course, there are checks and balances. That, that's the part of the state. The state should make sure that the community doesn't exploit the miner. They, they, they should also serve as habitat to make sure that the miner does not exploit the community. So it's a tripartite thing. And then there's need for open, continuous con communication, transparency. This is, I mean, you cannot invest and not make 30 for the. I mean, when we you, you do job with IOCs, I, I, I do small small jobs with IOCs, it is allowed for us to get up the 30% profit margin. It's standard. So any federal establishment, I do one or two jobs there and there. Start there. So they, 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 they don't, don't be afraid. I, I don't want them to see my profit. I mean, when you invest, you should make profit. So when you are that transparent, it will work. And then there's a need for consultation, for participation, and all going dialogue to maintain our social license to operate. So in conclusion, let me just say this. Commitment to sustainable development and responsible resource management is key. It's very, very important. And this is based on information sharing, dialogue, understanding, transparency, frankness, openness, inclusiveness, and starting early to talk. And please don't promise you don't have, most of us do blind mining. I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, my friend understand. You don't know your deposit, you see traces, you just did, you, you, you scratch, you did, you did a little beating, you now start to promise, you don't do that. If you don't have your information, you don't have your data, you don't, you don't say things you cannot do. So achieving minimal conflict and fostering cooperation between stakeholders is achievable. Let me read this last line for us. So commitment to sustainable and integral de development is not only the right, responsible, and ethical approach to managing the earth's natural resources and safeguarding the health of the planet for future generations of that sustainability, but also it makes sound business sense. See, this community issue makes sense because you are mining there. So if it's not peaceful, you can't make any headway. So it makes business sense too. Consequently, where information is shared truly, listen to this, truly and adequately, and consultative dialogue promoted, there can be a minimal misunderstanding and Complete. So I'm sure we will talk more as we do our having an interaction section. So that in a nutshell is just like opening up the issue. So over to you again, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Gideon. Um oh Tayo, um that is an interesting uh that's an interesting one. Um very precise, straight to what we actually want to hear. I appreciate you for such a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think at this time, like I said, you know, this more of interaction and discussion, um, we'll be trying to look at um, um, calling 
some people um, who I think also um, will look at some of the things you've actually said here. I don't know. Look, look, man, are you here? Look, man, are you here? Have you joined us? Look, man, are you here? I don't know. He said he was having problem with his. Uh, let me see. He was having problem with his connection. Look, man, are you here? Okay. Um. Okay. If he's not here, maybe if he's here, he can indeed. Okay. Wait. I think. Let me. Let me see if I is on mute. I can't see him here. Uh. Okay, let me unmute. Ask all to unmute. Let's everybody is on. You can unmute yourself now. You can unmute yourself now. So let me see if Lukman is here. Is Lukman here? Hello. Yes, I'm here. I was. Uh, the, oh. my, uh, I think my mic was unmuted on your side. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Okay, wait. Um, I've been trying to wait. Okay, Mitchell, are you here? Mitchell, are you here? I think she's there. Mitchell, are you here? No, everybody is. Everybody can talk now. I've... Mitchell, are you yes. here? Everybody, I can't. Yeah, I'm here. No, that is Mitchell is a lady, and I'm hearing a man's voice. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, if if. Surprisingly, maybe. Okay. Um, I wanted I wanted her to tell us about Lukman. Lukman. Okay, let me just take it. Lukman Kaka is actually joining us from Portugal. If I'm correct, Lukman, I'm correct, right? Yes, you're correct. Uh, Lukman yes. is joining us from Portugal and is highly accomplished and versatile business advisor, entrepreneur, and global strategic partner with a remarkable track record of some success across various stages of growth. Um, currently serving as a global strategic partner uh, at Sinotech Company Limited. He's a principal trustee at Hakim Olajuwon Development Trust Fund and also co-partner at CCM Investment LLC. Kaka brings over 25 years of experience in representing both startup and public companies with an extensive background in managing global business matters. Corporate finance, transactions, mergers and acquisitions, on infrastructural uh, infrastructure development, Kaka has also established himself as a leading expert in the field of uh, EPC for infrastructural <laughs> development in sectors such as construction, mining, energy, communication, transportation, agriculture, and commodities trading. Kaka's commitment to excellence is evident in his role as a strategic advisor to growth stage companies through movement industries, where he has he also holds a senior shareholding shareholder position. In this capacity, he provides valuable guidance on corporate and product strategy, shapes business opportunities, and contributes to overall growth and success of organizations. I think Kaka has so much to offer. If I want to talk about Kaka today, we will not go. You understand so much. So I just want to give a brief um, about who Kaka is. And at this stage, Kaka will just give you about two minutes to tell us um, your own share of the story, um, contribute to this. There are some other several about other four people that are here who also want to hear from them. So we will not have much, so we want to share this time so that everybody will be able to participate. Look, so Kaka, the platform is yours now. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much. I am honored and uh, greatly appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak uh, today with everybody, and I truly appreciate the uh, opportunity for the organization Gideon is heading uh, uh, regarding uh, the opportunity to develop the mining sector in a great nation of ours, Nigeria. Um, I, based on what Mr. Toya's uh, um, the this uh, the conversation that had with us today. I fully and uh, fully agree with every part of those um, plans that he had put in front of us because we don't have to look too far regarding what we are speaking on today. 
in terms of the sustainable development in the mining sector. In can everybody hear me okay? I can hear you yes. back. Doctor, what name are you using here so I can meet everybody and leave you? Yes. Yeah, sorry, it's ACGT. Okay. Okay, I've got it now. You can go on. Okay. Um, so what I was uh, saying is that I fully agree with all the uh, all the outline and uh, statements and the uh, research that was put in front of us uh, from Mr. Toyo. Um, this, uh, in terms of the development and the sustainability of the mining sector, uh, these are not new invention. You know, uh, if we're talking about the so-called first world, uh, they were able to uh surmount and organize their resources their natural resources and human capital to be able to build the infrastructure they have today and hence the reason why they they still have enormous amount of interest in africa because uh they you know undoubtedly um, tapped out their own resources so now because they have the infrastructure to be able to expand the opportunity to source resources from elsewhere, they continue to do so. So uh, fast forward today, even in Africa, um, you have some exemplary countries that have uh, understood this principle. You know, um, one example I would I will, I will state on now, the presently today, is Botswana. I'm not sure how many of us really hear any issue a problem coming out from Botswana since the independence. Um, they've had a uh, a relationship with the Beers for the for fifty four years, um, in partnership in one resource and one resource only, which is diamond, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, mm -hmm. that partnership have uh, really afforded them to be able to develop their nation you know, really that has a, um, a, 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 a per capita GDP comparable to some of the uh, European countries. And this is an African country. So um, the, the reality is of what we are speaking on is not a science of flying to, to the moon or flying to Mars. Uh, these are reality that are existing today all the uh, capacity for Nigerians, we as Nigerians, uh, to be able to tackle this issue is very much in our, on our fingers. Uh, we, we have the resources, we have the uh, intellectual capability, we have the human forces, the human capital, we have the traditional, we have the culture, basically, uh, we have every aspect of everything that we need uh, to build the greatest nation in the world. But where we fall short on is the absolute robust infrastructure for education. Because the question I will ask is, okay, you have the indigenous community. First of all, what law firm, what indigenous law firm, what Nigerian law firm, what African law firm is truly representing this community. That's number one. Number two, how much information, educational information on, on rights, as Mr. Toy has mentioned, has addressed in one of his, uh, his slides, how much information do they really understand about their rights, their indigenous rights to those minerals? Because, because one, of the, one of the things, one of the case that, uh, President uh, Masasesi of Botswana made to be able to re re restructure the contract they have with the beers to where they uh, to where they have to now the contract is structured to where it is a 50 50 partnership before it was 25 percent 25 percent goes to uh, 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 Convango which is the national company uh, or Covango which is a national company of Botswana that has 25% stake in all the production of diamond that get that get to be sold back to the states. And then the beers own 75%. Now, 
the president's telling them now, listen, we have to renegotiate re this, uh, this uh, contract. You know, before we were in the dark. Now we understand the, implement, the implementation of where we are in terms of our resources and our yeah. rights to these resources. So we have to renegotiate. We have to come back on the table and uh, really negotiate a fair and applicable uh, business contract. And this happened only because, number one, there's, a, there's an enlightened education on what your rights are and what your value and what your self-worth is. Uh, that's number one. And number two, they were able to have, they were able to have the ability to be able to negotiate based on that knowledge. You know, and the beers cannot refuse that contract. They could not, they could not now say, well, okay, there was impossible for the BDS to, 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 to roll back on that contract. They had to adhere to what Botswana want as a fair, amicable contract. So what I'm saying today, today is in, in closing, you know, Nigeria has, has been exporting oil for the past 60 years of, you know, with multinational corporation. When you ask Nigeria, Age they in today. It's probably a public record that we can pull up. But what I'm what I'm saying is that sovereign wealth fund it hasn't adequately sufficiently developed Nigeria from that one resource that it has and still has today. Hasn't adequately developed that nation to the greatest nation that it needs to be. We look at we can just all we have to do is just look at around on all the examples that we have that are evident today on what we need to do with our resources. We don't look, we don't need to look too far. We have all the laws there in Nigeria. We have all the capable intellectual ability there in Nigeria. So now the will, the political will, the right leaders that has a real foresight, not Let's grab and go foresight because Nigeria has been operating since I was born on an emergency basis. Grab and go emergency. Everybody is on that mode. Oh, it's lithium today. Okay, no problem. Let's try to <laughs> grab my uh, grab lithium mine as quickly as possible. Oh, it's gold <laughs> tomorrow. No problem. Let's try to grab and nobody is <laughs> taking. Not the leaders are taking any moment of time to really set our country in a foothold of the next generation to be able to benefit from it from 100 years of generation. Unfortunately, we have to have a brain drain. We have to have people like me leaving the country to go and fetch for ourselves. But at the end of the day, we can't expect Chinese, Americans, uh, France, or any of these foreign nation to have our best interests at heart. And this is this is the reason why you know I I I I want to uh, lend my expertise, even though I'm not a big uh, park person on on this type of foreign, but lend my expertise to be able to align with like-minded people that are really thinking about the future, not grab and go. You know, this is not a race. This is a marathon. This is this what we're talking about is not about you know it's not about how much money we can generate from lithium mining. No, this is not even about that. It's not even close to what, what, what it's re what's really relevant to this conversation. What's relevant to this conversation is how do we plan real policy, real education, real laws, real implementation, real maintenance, real sustenance, and real equity? Hmm. It's not about the minerals. The minerals are there. <laughs> But without any of those things being put in place, well, we're just having a good conversation about technical jargons. Mm -hmm. So in closing, 
um, we have everything we need. We're not reinventing the wheel. Let's come together and put things, put real, real infrastructure in place before we even dig any mine or sign any contract with any foreign country or, or do any of that sort. First of all, you know, they, it has to, there has to be a, an institution that lead this, uh, this, uh, this premise. So I thank you very much. I hope I didn't say anything. That's, no, that no, 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 that's a great that. one. Um, but we thank you very much. We thank you um, for that um, for that contribution. Um, I think um, we still have a lot of people online. Um, Miss, um, okay, let's just, uh, there are some people that are not close by, but we'll try to see, we'll try to see what we can do to accommodate them. Okay. Okay, madam, I don't know if you are. Okay, let me unmute. Let me unmute. Let me unmute them. Uh, Miriam, Miriam, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? Uh, good morning, I'm here. Okay, Miriam is joining us from Canada and uh, Miriam is uh, one of uh, uh, our members here and she's a mining engineer and I want her to draw um, I wanted to draw some experience um, um, from what she's actually learned so far. And uh, there are two things I want you to just quickly um, address. Uh, please, I wanted to stick to some of this time. Uh, just a minute, two minutes is okay. Maximum of three minutes on this. I want you to, um, uh, to draw parallel. If that, uh, could you just draw parallel between the experience of your region there and the mining sector of that country? Uh, you know, just where you are and the state and local government involvement. I want you to uh, to look at that. Tell us about that. And are there any specific lessons that you your region can learn from the practices of this? Um, if there are anyone that we can learn from the practice of your region, finally we can actually put it um, in one of as one of our you know uh, what we are actually getting today. Please, can you go on, Miriam? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, before I start, I'd just like to thank the presenter for. The presentation was really insightful, and there are a lot of things that I took away from it, especially from the Nigerian perspective. But um, speaking of that, I did have a few questions, but before getting into that, just speaking briefly on how exactly things are done here. For instance, I think there's a what it makes things a bit less convoluted when there is a distinction between who has what land. I feel like in Nigeria, there could be a bit of a runaround especially with what he was saying about you meeting some bad actors, right? So I'm sure you yourself may have experiences where you go to a town with the best intentions and you keep, you're honestly being strong armed or like being told to pay this and pay that and pay this and there's no direct path. I feel like the, where you don't fall into that type of issues here is because every every land is distinctively owned by who? So there is crown land, which is which is federal land. Resources that fall in the crown land are the government. So the hoops in which you have to cross to be able to access or mine it is, it is a lot easier. And then you have your provincial land. And then your provi provincial lands are typically owned by the province, which is an equivalent to the state. And then with that, the province, the provincial land will probably fall under the region as well. So like, for instance, the mine that... Um, that I currently work at is at the region of the Buffalo, which is a provincial land. So everything that is everything that's um, pertaining to the land itself, we speak to the to the provincial government. But there's also a, an interesting caveat when it comes to the environmental aspect of it. So whatever whatever parts of your land communicate with the river, that becomes federal. That's when the federal like the federal umbrella cares about it because water here is protected by the federal government due to environmental reasons, of course. And the thing with Canada, if you know, is that we do have a lot of lakes and rivers. So most of your, and especially when you want to mine, you typically want to mine in an area where you have water, like you have a water resource available that you can actively tap into. So when you get into that, you do realize that you should still brush with the federal government in terms of what you're releasing into the river, if you're allowed to release into the river at all. And that, I, I think that added layer of security kind of helps. So for instance, 
a lot of my a lot of minds are on first term basis with their it like their regulator that's what we call them so you have regulators assigned to each mind and they're actively involved in everything that you do you have reports that you give them every weekly reports mm-hmm. monthly reports and yearly reports so they are very involved in that and i i think i like to stick with the environmental aspect of it because when I was doing some reading recently and I noticed that, or it came to my, I mean, we all know there's real Nigerians and we see what like Shell has done in the Niger Delta River um, area. And these are the contamination that Shell has done in that area and has taken maybe billions of dollars away from the country has made that area somewhat in, inhabitable. So you have an example and then you have, I don't know if you guys have seen it of late, but Imperial Oil had a tailing leak in Canada, I think sometime in the summer. And that leak was such a big deal that they were fined greatly for it. And this was a few meter cubes of leakage into the water. So my point is this, if a few, let's say a thousand, two thousand meter cubes of water being leaked into the river could be heavily dramatized while Shell has made parts of Nigeria inhabitable and nobody's saying anything about it. It just shows you the only, the, the company cares as much as the government cares, as much as the regulation are enforced. I feel like the huge distinctions about how we care about the indigenous people here, as opposed to in, in Nigeria is, there is no enforcement like in the state level, especially when it comes to environmental protections, in the state level, in provincial level, or in a government federal level. The, the companies or whoever, how large the corporation are, are taking precedence over the importance of the people in the community. Especially depending on how large the company is and how large I feel like people can, or how large the royalties you can take from them are, then it starts becoming a gray area. Like for instance, in Canada, I know most of you are aware of this, but it's a huge immigration country. Nobody is really from here, except the people we call the indigenous communities, which are the Inuits, the Métis, the native Indians. When it's native Indian land, there's an added a, a layer of complexity on how you approach it, because you obviously have to have this chief's approval. And I think that's where the local government aspects of it, Nigeria can mimic it a bit, where you definitely do have, need your chief's approval to be able to do anything. So here's a question I'd like to ask Mr. Tyre mm-hmm. if he's still on the line, is that when you get to, a, like obviously, Mining is never going to have a, a glamorous image. Everybody sees mining as things, environmental pollution, things, um, land disturbance, which they're not far off of. But it also, the benefit of a mine is that it's a town creator. There's a mine in this area. There's definitely development that's going to come as a result of it because a lot of people will move there for job, ex- job opportunities and such. But when you see... Like when you have when you when you get into an area where there are hindrances from the community on wanting to develop the area, how do you come about? Like how do you go around it when you know that technically it could be beneficial economically, but you have people from the area that are resisting that change? How do you go about it? Tayo, hello, Tayo, are you there? Okay, Tayo, you must be on mute too. Okay, Tayo, I wanted to respond to this quickly before. Yes, um, let me quickly come in. See, there are some cases that are just, I'll be honest with you, they're impossible. I've had several instances like that. But you see, if you notice the trend of this um, discourse, I started talking about starting to talk early. Part of the early talk that is tripartite is conflict resolution mechanism. Almost all of us are guilty of that. And you see, when you jump what you're supposed to do at the beginning, you almost always have this issue. Now, I'll come again to this polygard example. Polygard is operating the land that has been declared even by me as with my many years of experience in that area. But when he came in and he came with this approach from the beginning, all issues that came up they have mechanisms to address them. So the issue of starting is very important. Now, now the state input is not there. But even 
as it is now that the state, the state part of the tripod is not there. Even between the community and the mining company, you need to have like what I learned from him and I've been using. We have this community association. We bring people from the company and the community. That, that is what helped us in that instance I was talking to you about in Kogi State. The community, we meet with them every time we talk. So when you have two or three of them that are in Castletrans, they are difficult. If some among them say, no, 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 don't do that. So, so when you get it right from the beginning, and it's very important, the 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 the, 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 the process is very important. Now, when most of us jump the process, we don't put in systems that can that that, that, that can anticipate this kind of happening. There will always be conflict. There will always be confrontation when, when, when it comes to mineral and, and exploration issues. But when there are built in mechanisms. In terms of systems that will cooperate both the community and the mining company, and when the state coming to that, 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 that is what, what the state is supposed to do. To so there is nothing that comes up that will not. But as it is now, there are many projects that will be stopped by such events. We can't help it because of the faulty foundation that we had. So I, I don't know whether I've been able to say that we don't waste that because there are so many things okay. to talk about. I don't know whether I've been addressed that. Miriam, is, is, that, is that okay? Hello. Okay, Ty, I think Sorry. I think um I think that the lady, is uh, the lady yes, is, is you okay with that? Yeah, maybe yeah, I think I can't hear her, but we can proceed. Okay. We can Fine. proceed. Um maybe she will go. just yeah. Okay, I think thank you for that. Uh thank you for that response. Uh quickly we we will want to because there are some uh, some of the guests we have here who might actually want to, you know, we are having some the yeah, law um, uh, conference is actually going on right now in Abuja. And some of the lawyers that are actually come in here to speak on some issue of law, some of them are actually gone back to conference and they are latting me and all that. But I can see, um, I still have Barista Okafor here. Barista Okafor, are you there? I think I saw him. Barista John Okafor. John, can you omit? Okay. John, are you there? I think John has seems to have also gone out. I am muted. Oh, oh, okay. See, see, let me, okay. You can unmute yourself. I think Miriam just sent a message that she was muted. Sorry about that. Barrister John, are you there? Miriam, you can hear me now. You can talk. Okay, let's just. Yeah, I can. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that. I was talking to Barrister. I don't know whether he's still online. Um, Barrister John Okaf, are you there? Okay. If he's not there, um, if he's not yeah, there, I'm here. Okay, 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 okay. Barrister is back online. So, Barrister, I think um, thanks for joining us. Um, I want you to um just speak on the issues of. Uh, what you know about the, you know, I know you that somebody who has actually been actively involved in mining and dealing with some communities. What are your experiences with some of these communities? Do you think there are things that are actually um, shut in um, in terms of our regulations? Because um, most of the things, most of the most difficult thing to actually do in this process is dealing with the communities. And there have been a lot, a lot of cries from here and there and all that. Some people are saying you have to start from the top to bottom. Some are saying you have to start from the bottom to top. So we want to see how can we get some of these things right? How can we resolve some of these issues that are actually um, lingering when it comes to um, uh, CDAs or community issues? Okay, okay. Good day all, good day to everybody. I'm Barista Kafo John. You see, uh, you're talking about the community. We have to look at the extant law first, you know? Nigerian Minerals and Mining Act, you know, 2007. It was reenacted in 2007. But yes, you know, the, 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 the problem is uh, people are saying that because it's, the law is still under review, that it is federal government centric. You know, what it means is, you know, because by the, by the act, it says every mineral, you know, in the nation belongs to the federal government. And it's only federal government that can give you rights over the, the mining lease, the mining rights. Not even also considering that there are, there are other laws that affect that uh, Nigerian Mineral and Mining Act, like Land Use Act, environmental laws, 
company are allied matters act so you know you know you know i'm sorry to say that because i know i you know you know nigeria is a, uh, like a permissive society you know where everything goes so when you are, when you got it, this license you know the law ought to have taken into cognizance the locals that's why they are saying that all this uh, law will be modified so that state government and local government will also have a part to play and remember in our back league, the law now gives you permission you know to go and mine in a particular community. That community says no. They say no. Despite your licenses, your leases, your permits, or whatever with the federal government, the community says no, especially what we have prevalent in the South. Because Northerners are, I mean, they, 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 they are only doing the mining and they can understand. But Southerners, they refuse. They tell you, okay, assuming you're coming, you know, with your mindset that look at the kind of investment, mining needs a lot of investment. And you're coming to make an investment, and you, you have agreed to give the community 10% of whichever, so that you, you, you also take cognizance, you, you know, all that things you are going to spend, you know, security, you know, all the infrastructure you are going to build, and all these things. The community now says 30%. And nobody to enforce that law. If you go to federal government, they will tell you go and go. I mean, so there are so, so much chaos. So I think the best is. Whether you have license or, or, or sorry, or sorry to take you back. I want also to say that a co community can even so much to give a minor license without even minding whether federal government has given the other person. They give you, and the one the community gives you is the one that will mind. So I think we will have to start by, you know, uh, putting uh, our law, you know, uh, changing our laws, you know, like we are trying to, you know, this law is uh, to modify the law incorporate the community and local government because they are the owners of the property really. Under the land use act, every property in the in the state belongs to the governor. And these are state, uh, state uh, land. So I think the state should also be incorporated. It's not been it's not been wonderful dealing with the community. <laughs> but if you are, but if you agree to this one, illegal miners, I mean Gideon, you know there's 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 a blog that was given to my client to mine, there, a, there are illegal miners there. The state, I mean, the, the, the community refused our company to mine there. And they allowed the illegal miners to mine. Don't have, they have to be mining. You know, and the, and the illegal miners are taking, they, 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 they are sharing the whatever they mine with the community because they are not spending much. So the, the law the law has to take me, I believe they take the uh, cognizance of the community strictly. And also like the other, the last speaker tell your said, if you want to go to mine, just go and negotiate with the community. Discountenance the federal government. But because you are a minor, you have to get the license from the federal government. Then discountenance whatever the federal government is telling you. Go and sit down with the state, the community and negotiate. Put also uh, the governor you know, in cognizance, because the government also wants to have a part of it. It's so chaotic, but people that know how to do this thing know how to do mining in Nigeria. You sit with the community. I agree with you. Yeah. Forget um, oh. Barista, thank you. Um, thank you for that. I think um, I don't want to start a lot of, uh, you know, quite well that we've got so many experiences from the community when it comes to this. Um, um, to the extent that we are refused from mining in a, in a place that is covered by mining lease, not even SSML or any other thing, but this is a place that mining lease has actually been um, gotten for 25 years. And after all said and done, the community gave it to someone who doesn't even have license. You know, it's not only in that location, several locations. And at the end of the day, you find out that even the federal government could not even come to your rescue. You wouldn't talk about what is happening, what happened between you all and uh, Ishiago people, um, in terms of let's think of who can cite so many, the community even went to court because they believe that they, 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 the company didn't get the proper consent from them and all that. So I think um, this issue is it's, it's so much, so much, there's so much complexity in it because sometimes when you even run to the state government, um, to the federal government to implement the laws, you find out that it's like, you, you are tired, you, you you go there and you get tired of bringing them to the sites to come and resolve issues. So I think if you can actually handle your community where you are working, 
I think that's the first point of call that we actually need to start with. You know? So um, thank you for that um, brief contribution. Um, we will also want to um, hear from uh, Dr. Fadeli. Dr. Fadeli, um, are you are you here? Dr. Fadel, are you here? Or have you been muted too? Okay, let me check. Dr. Fadel, are you here? Allow. Yes. You can. Dr. Fadel, are you there? You can talk now. Okay. I don't think he's there. Okay. Okay, I think um I've Okay, um Dr. Fadali, please I I would uh, want you to briefly um I want you to briefly um just tell us how this state government um can effectively balance the interest of of the mining. Yes, can you hear me? I'm talking. Can yes. you hear me? Okay. Yes. I say how can yes. state government effectively balance the interests of uh, of mining companies and the rights of of indigenous community that is one and also could you share some example of if you have any of any successful cases where state intervention are prevented or resolved conflicts between indigenous community and uh, and mining companies please I'll, I'll just need uh, two minutes from you on yeah. that okay thank you so much okay um I just want to do a kind of recap because I believe um, the present dealt recently on the on those um issues that has because um, it is clear from his presentation that community be it culturally, economically, or in their traditional or historical homelands. And um, the Mineral and Mining Act. How to establish agreements, uh, you know, which concerns communities affected by their activities and um, not be overemphasized because that is where most of this. Uh, it is rather can have a shared um, benefits from the mining act. So the introduced by the solid mineral sector in order to promote harmonious and um, mutually beneficial between the mining uh, companies and uh, and uh, this post or. In Okay, please unmute yourself. But we can't hear you. Can you look at your okay? Yeah, go on. So that's why I said um the concept of CDA cannot be in the context. Of um, this benefit, you see, by the time you carried most of the major stakeholders or the key community along in your decision making, you carry the women and their interests, the youth, uh, the people of disability, and so on and so forth. You discover that uh, there will not be, you know, they will revolt. Hmm. All the team. Have been carried along and their interests have been captured in it. So it is not that uh, the mineral title holders also play their own part. These things have been carried along and uh, and have been um, executed. And just like um, Tyot also established, you know, when you are beginning to, you know, putting up all these CDs, you have to look, count your teeth what you are getting from that very particular area before you pen or you put some uh, disagreement on paper, on black and white and signed by all the major stakeholders. Because the implication is that the state are 
both the local, the federal, all the parties involved, the consultants, the NGOs, are all witness of um, you know this brand, uh, groundbreaking ceremony that's um, the CDA. So that's why I said the CDA have uh, a key role to play. And some of the key elements that are very important when you want to have a what have a time frame when they begin to see something visible within so short time they will know that your company is serious there will be an relationship and looking at the capacity of those participating in the stakeholder workshop you have a good grievance and dispute resolution mechanism you have monitoring you know all these things put together makes your work effective and the community have a share play. And when they see that, okay, they are lands and um, grazing, as the case may be, will be reclaimed. You know, when you have a good, you know, environmental um, protection, okay, after all, after all this work, you are still returning my land for its use. You know, it will always, um, as the case may be. I think um, I can rest my case because um, we have uh, much to see, but um, because of our time, another speaker. Um, okay. Um, case, yeah. Thank you very much for that one, um, wonderful contribution. Uh, before I go down to um, Darix, I don't know if Dr. Misalawi is around, but before I go to her, I want uh, Barrister John to actually say something. There's something I want I want his thoughts on this, um, on this uh, executive order that are flying up and down um, from the state governors. Um, how can we really, how can we really um, make sure that some of these others and um, if they are actually interfering or if they are also in concern with the law, because a lot of stakes have been flying executive orders and on that basis uh, arresting some people and you know some tax folks making money out of them, some tax force arresting and you know so many things are going on, you know in different states. I want to see what is the relationship of this executive order orders with the federal government laws. Um, Barrister John, please, can you, I will need your thoughts on this. Um, let me unmute you. Uh, you can unmute yourself now and talk. Okay, okay, thank you. You see the, the, the executive orders, they are not, uh, they are illegal. You know, they are not, um, they ought not to be impossible in the first place. You know, where there is a conflict between the state and the federal government, the federal government's law supersedes that of the state. And moreover, the state has not been given the right you know, to grant leases or licenses or whichever. I told you only the law that you can say that incorporated is as it were. That plan is hard. So the orders the governors are like, giving that is really illegal and are not enforceable. On that is very okay. Barrister right, so John, we've lost you. We've lost you. We can't hear from you. Check, Barrister right, so John, we can't hear you. You muted me. I was muted by okay. you. Okay, okay, sorry. Go on. I'm hearing some noise from the background, I think. Okay, go on. Okay. Go on yeah. So what I'm saying is, whichever laws the state governors are making, the executive orders, they are not impossible. They are illegal. You know, when there are disputes between the federal government and the state government, the federal government should proceed because that's the governing law. That's the governing government. But what you have in Nigeria, because like I said initially, I said Nigeria is a lawless society. You know, it's a passive society, anything goes. So because the state governors are the overlords of that their state, they tend to overcome everything, they tend to bandish everything, intimidate people, they have the coercion in their state and everything. Federal government, once they give you a license, they let you to be on your own. So when you are negotiating with the community also, you have to put the state governors in cognizance. Even though by law, they do not have power. Mining is not on that concurrent list, it's exclusive list. It's not on that concurrent list. But like I said in my first, uh, in my first uh, speech, I said we are trying to also amend this 2007, 2007 Act. 
to incorporate the states, some cognizance of states and their local governments, so that all this issue will stop. But as it is today, governors are doing uh, what they're doing, uh, you know, what they're doing is very, very illegal, but nobody can stop them. Nobody can stop them. That they, they are the chief executive of their state. So what they are doing is illegal, but nobody can stop them. They are the overlords. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, it's unfortunate that we find ourselves in such situation. But like I keep saying, we can't stop talking. We need to bring the awareness and we'll keep talking until something, maybe something um, start happening. But um, it's not a new thing that the problem we have in our country is a problem of impunity. You know, it's not that uh, we don't have the laws. The laws are there, the regulations are there, but the impunity is number one issue we have. Everybody, anybody can do anything. And for the fact that nothing will happen, the next person will do the same thing. And you see, so that is where we find ourselves. But we think that we 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 can't uh, give up. We need to understand how these things are going to be resolved. Um, thank you for that um, contribution. Um, next, um, Dr. Mrs. Salau, I don't know if she's back online. I wanted her to give us some, um, um, before we actually finalize on that. Madam, are you here? Madam, are you here? Okay. I'm here, if you okay. have mute me. Yes, you can talk now, we can. Now, um, please, I want you to just precisely and quickly, um, Precisely, quickly, just tell us this. This is very important to us. Um, one is, and uh, how does this, uh, the division of powers between the federal and state government impact um, the regulation of mining activity? You know, um, that is one. And also, um, can you explain this, uh, the role of this uh, Miramco um, in ensuring indigenous rights because and respected, actually respected, during mining operations, because I know that Miramco, uh, those ones uh, within the state, I want you to share more light on this Miramco um, thing. Let's understand what is the actual role in protecting the indigenous rights in mining. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, all the, the presenters and the question, uh, those people that have asked tangible question. I appreciate you all for coming on board. This is a critical issue in Nigeria today. But I just want to emphasize on the law as being spelled out, which is the section 19 of the Minerals and Mining at 2007. That is for the state. Get up. Wanting somebody to implement it. In the whole state, I stated that there should be an establishment, a committee to be known as what? Mineral Resources and Environmental, Mineral Resources and Environmental, the committees. Who are the people that comprises this committee? The environmental, uh, the Ministry of Environment, state, the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry in the state, representative of local government council, among all are the representatives of committee. A decision is to be made. We have all to oversee the mineral resources money, including the, as go down as much as local. The state does don't understand this. They I keep asking. I'd already given them. They want to. When it comes to mineralization, it's not assigned to states. Mineralization of any minerals costs across different states, and they have been. Mm -hmm. 
as such, the law that governs the mineral resources of is of national, not local government, not because if you do that, it comes to regulation. What I want to bring out in is that that's Mirenko activities. Or between the state and the federal government should be the one that be, if they are fully implemented, a lot of question and answer on community, social corporate responsibility of every spelled out. And as we have been saying all this way, we are talking about what? Transparency. In anything you do, when everybody is carried out, transparency, nobody will fight each other. Nobody, the EMEA, the local government, the, I could see in the whole thing is that there is lack of staff to do the, those, to come along, to work and collaborate, form synergy between the state and the, the state, local government and the federal. These resources in a responsible manner as well as benefiting from it for the future. That is all I need to put on today. The, so the, as my, Mr. Tayo, this community are not mine. Go to them before coming to collect your licenses. Let yeah. them understand what you are coming for. Don't over exaggerate what you can do for them because if you are not doing it, they will not be against you. If you know what it takes and how to go about it and you take them along the mineral value chain in your operation, Nobody will be again. Should don't think they are foolish. You go there, you give them ten thousand. A concept for your mining title. And the value of what is doing. Can't it follow? Of course, they will refuse you. Refuse you. So if you put everything, the best people to work with, they will be, they will, they will, safety for your equipment, safety for everything you have around them. I've experienced that. Being where I've worked before, I have gone through all conflict resolution. In I can tell you the best bets of what we need to do Bring hmm. those indigenous people along. Okay, ma. Okay, ma. I think your network breaks, and can you hear me? Okay, I think. Hello, ma. Are you there? Yes, I am. I okay, am. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Um, at this moment, we will just have about um more ten minutes to round up on this uh today's uh, presentation. And I would just want to quickly um, give some opportunity to some of us that have raised their hands here. Um, generally, if you have any question, please just directly um, just make your comment or your question um, within 10 seconds. I'm seeing Atunga Madi raised hand here. Who else has raised hand? Emmanuel Sako um, and uh, raised hand. So um, let's give opportunity to Emmanuel first. Emmanuel, please. Arisen. Okay, Emmanuel. Okay, if it's not ready. Okay, yes, sir. I'm ready. Okay, please. Can you can you make your comment or your um your actual question, please? Um, it's just a, a common. Okay, let me just say just like how do we resolve this? Because there was once a time we went to a site in Kogi precisely, so and um. On that side, already there are other local miners 
campus and went to uh, to see the chief and the rest. Everybody was in the well, everybody was contacted, we were paid the money list and everything, but yet the people are still so adamant they were, they were not they were kind of giving um, attention to us. They were like, okay, no, that today they are with us, tomorrow they are with the other people, so we just don't know which and where to stand in between the two. So in that situation now, what would one do? What can one do? I'm tired, please. Can you can you address the question? Tayo. Okay. Yes, thank you. Quick, quick, quick one. Now, remember I told you some places, Madam Miran, some pretty places are not actually mineable. Let me do that again. Some places, Madam Minerals, they're not mineable. There are places, actually places like that. And see, as miners, as investors. There are red flags we should not overlook when we are looking for land to mine. Like Mr. Lau said, and like, like, like I first said when I was presenting, the starting point for, to get a place to mine is to identify the owners of the land, the community that owns the land, the chief of the chiefdom under with the communities. That being said, as it were, now any community you go to, no matter, and please quote me, I have small experience over 30 years in this thing. Any community you go to that you have things like that, my brother, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, there are red, red flags. You have a place where there are seven, eight, nine, ten people. They have records yeah. of coming and going. You've got to be careful. Yeah. Not everywhere is mineable. <laughs> Cut your cost yeah. and just pray to God to give you another place. That's all. Yeah, it's true. Okay, I think that is true. Um, not everywhere. There are so many places that some, according to their belief, there are some places you go to, they will tell you that from the history, um, from what they believe and what they've experienced, they've actually don't want to allow mining happen in their community. That happened to me before. And we did everything possible. Sometimes with time, you know, you keep engaging them, keep uh, um, familiarizing yourself with them, keep sensitizing them engaging the more you engage the more they come to terms with you and all that but the, <laughs> the, most of the community issues are not something you solve in one month or two months or thereabout there are some community issues that linger for years and at the end of the day, <laughs> so, so i think this is one of the issues we need to understand um Arthur, please are you there can you make your comment before we round it off please okay Thank good you, afternoon man. good afternoon sorry for, sorry for joining late i just want Experience. Um, uh, where I mine, where I actually worked for um mine, three mines globe. So far, since I've been working, that's one of the places where I see that the community even supports the activities, and I I I feel that what really cost that uh, was one the understanding of the community even as at, as at when we went to that, that community they had no chief their chief their chief their chief within two prominent two prominent persons but even at that, that the community uh, accommodating to us and um, even supported us in everything uh, they are honorable because they have uh, many of their stake, um, who, who are um, in politics. We started with those activities. We went there, met the honorables, discussed with the honorables, came down to the chief, came down to the locals. We, as in, the, the, the title was gotten in 2018, but the real, the real mining started last year. That's 2022. Understand? So mm -hmm. all this, all the while, um, and at the end of the day, the community themselves, they are the one even backing you, covering you, even as even though we still have to um, employ one or two. Mm. Um, accommodation is there. They even go about helping you to chase illegal miners if they see them. That's how that's how it, that's how good it, the, the relationship is even up till now. So um, the, I don't think there's actually a blueprint on how to change the uh, soft communities because some communities can deliberately become difficult deliberately become difficult. So, but I just feel that, um, first of all, I think it's understanding of the community themselves. 
if if the community are, are, are those that are already the, the, this the, this mining thing is something they are not strange it's not strange to them they actually know about it you cannot take that as an advantage but most of the difficulties we face especially in the south is one we are we we we, we it's as if they are, we, are, we are coming to take their land from them. They don't really have this understanding about the whole process of the mining. And many of us who go there are not really open to them. There's this always trying to hide information and trying to see. So and most times, people are very smart. They will, they, will, they, will, they will read into the line and they become difficult. So that is just my own experience. It, so far, it has been good, at least. I have one that is successful, even up to now, and there's no issue at all. So that's just my own experience. Okay. Thank you, Arthur, for that wonderful contribution and your comments on this issue today. Um, I will tell you that I think um, when we, in between 2000 and uh, between 2012, between 2010 and 2012, that Barry Saturn is always not here. I wanted him to speak today, but I think he's actively involved in the NBA conference going on in Abuja, and uh, he couldn't actually come out. Um, if not, between that two years, uh, we successfully secured about over 60 consents within the Kogi states, you know, in, within um, uh, various uh, concessions and all that. It wasn't an easy task, but we were able to do that and they gave us their consent. But what thing with community is that you keep the sensitization of the community and carrying them along is not something you do once um, uh, one off. It's not a one off thing. It's something that is continuous and you keep doing it and all that. Most of the time, I can remember a project that we did. What killed that project because of the promise one of our projects did that? Um, the promise he made. And at the end of the day, when the project started, they, they didn't see the project. They didn't see the promise. They said, Mr. Man, the first day you came here, this is what you said you are going to do with this mineral. But at the end of the day, you are doing some other thing. That was actually what where the chaos started. And that actually saw to the end of that project. You know, So I believe that we need to treat these uh, community issues with every, um, uh, um, uh, um, every sense of urgency, and um, you know sensitivity. Uh, I thank everyone today. Uh, this opportunity, uh, this time, I want to use this opportunity. I'm seeing some people that I invited for the first time. I think they are here. And uh, first time, I'm a uh, first thing. I want to thank Ty for making our time. I know how busy he is. You know, some of these things are not so easy to you know to bring some of these people here. Very difficult to get them, bring them on board, and follow them up. Tell them to do this give them instructions and they, you know, it's like giving them instruction, they will leave whatever they need. This is just too hard. Imagine from 12 to, and they are here and all that. And uh, Lukman, uh, it's not an easy thing. I thank you so much. Lukman will be talking to us. I think we need to we need to look at some financial aspects of some of this mining. I will just discuss with Lukman to share some more light on that with us on some other subsequent episodes. I want to thank everyone. And Dr. Mr. Salau is, uh, is the uh, the founder of Dix uh, and our mentor for Dix platform, and um, I always pray that God keep her alive, um, so that we, a lot of people, a lot of us, need to learn a lot from her. She's been in Dix business for over thirty five years, and she has actually retired and still working as as if she's just um, um, starting. Emmanuel, we thank you for your contribution. Fadele, we appreciate you because we know that you're always there. And uh, we are, I also want to thank um, um, Bolanle uh, Wellington. She's joining us. I think this is the first time I invited her. And I think she was the first person that actually joined this program today because I took note of the first person that came into this platform today. Uh, maybe the platform today, we, we are not actually talking about money. That's why we didn't get up to 60 partic participants. But maybe uh, we're going to talk about money next time. Uh, once you talk about money and listening, people will be everywhere and all that. But they don't know that the community issues, if you don't have the community, if you don't know how to, you say, this is the number one thing to deal with. Forget you can waste your investment, waste everything if you cannot actually um, deal with the community. Influence, mm -hmm. I will thank you for actually participating. Um, Christopher, Christopher is one of us um, always when it comes to the chemistry of every mineral. Christopher has been there for us. Thank you, sir. And okay, Akim is here. Akim, interesting. Uh, who else am I, am I not seeing here? Akim, you've not said anything, no hand. Oh, uh, recent, the most recent doctor is here. Um, Anguleti, Anguleti, can you yes. hear me? Can you hear me? I'm seeing Anguleti. Yes, Patisa, Patisa is our new catch. I can hear you. Thank you, Gideon. Patisa. Patisa. 
Party Issa. Okay, yes, Party Issa. Okay, yes. I'm just trying to see where is that name. I can't see the name. The Fatih oh, Issa okay. is. She, I can't see the name on the. Uh, yeah, Maybe we are up to thirty. Just got up. Uh, we are up to thirty, and some people have actually dropped and all that. Um, who else? Ladi and Esther Chimuba always there. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for. Okay, Fatih Issa is here. I can see, but I don't think that she she's audible because I can't see her her phone. Yes. On. Yes. Uh, yes. She's not audible. Um, Malik Salau, thank you for joining. And who else? I thank everyone. Um, um, everyone that joined earlier, those that joined late. Especially um, those who, 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 who didn't sleep because yes. of the time difference. Yes, yeah, the time difference. Yes, people imagine yes. the time difference in Canada, and now is 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 it's not easy to call all these people to join us from all different um time zone, and they are here even on time before most of all. So. I appreciate everyone is is a good one. Please let's make it again um um next month. Next month, um the last Monday of every month, uh for the August, we for the month of August, I mean sorry, this is August for the month of September, the last Monday will be oh, it's earlier, it's coming earlier. It's coming earlier, 25th. Uh it's gonna be 25th. So I appreciate all of us for joining. So at this moment, please, you can also. Oh, we've lost a lot of people already. I think, um, okay, at this, we can please turn on our video. Let's just take our, our photographs, then we'll, we'll call it a day. Um, can we see videos, videos, turn on the videos, wherever you are, because even if you're in the bush, it doesn't mean we can just pick, we can just pick the video. If you're in the bush, you're in the toilet, you are everywhere, don't worry, just let us see your head. Is enough, it's okay for us, <laughs> then. Yes. Um. So you can take. You can also take the pictures. Um. For me, I'm taking mine already. So thank you very much, and we say have a wonderful um and a great day ahead of you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Yeah, thank you, ma. Bye.